Dealing with pests is a significant part of managing a vegetable garden, and there are several different strategies that growers can use. Within the context of this Red Gardens project, I tend to rely on specific approaches as the primary way of dealing with particular pests. I use a lot of netting as barriers to prevent caterpillars and birds eating my brassica plants, and a finer mesh to prevent carrot fly damage. I provide places for slugs to hide around the gardens, and then I kill them, and I use a similar approach with the rats. I have found trap crops useful to, for distracting the flea beetles away from the brassicas, and more recently these have evolved into trap and burn crops. But for aphids, I have generally relied on the healthy population of ladybirds or ladybugs as great natural predators for this potentially problematic pest. But the ladybird population didn't seem to be as abundant in the last few years, and they were initially non-existent when there was a real problem with aphids in one of the polytunnels earlier this season. But a short while later, there were lots of these beneficial insects doing what I needed them to do, and it seems that this sudden change was because of a barrier that I put up to keep out another pest. For the most part, I don't have a lot of issues with aphids in the gardens. I think mainly because I've gotten a lot better at growing healthy plants. And aphids seem to be more attracted to plants that are struggling or stressed. And if I'm able to provide the vegetable plants with everything that they need, then I seem to be able to avoid significant infestation. In the polytunnel, I generally end up finding the sap-sucking aphids on the lettuce plants that I grow as the spring turns into the heat of the summer. Lettuce plants are less tolerant to heat, which I think is why the aphids appear. I don't mind this so much as by then I usually have lettuce available from the outside gardens and I figure that this gives the adult ladybirds enough food to reproduce so that these natural predators are available later in the season for other crops. I also tend to have aphids on my tomato plants in one of my polytunnels in the summer, though not so much in my other polytunnel. I'm not sure why this is the case, but it seems the plants are struggling with some nutrient issues or some other factor, but the plants still produce quite well, especially if there are enough ladybirds around to help. But in the past few years, I've noticed that there are fewer of these beneficial insects around, even though there is good habitat for them to live in and plenty of food. I generally haven't worried so much about this, but then a large batch of eggplant or aubergine plants that I transplanted into this polytunnel were really badly affected by aphids for the first part of the season this year. I'm not sure why this was, but the plants likely suffered from transplant shock as they were a bit root bound in the pots and needed to get into the soil earlier. There were also signs of nutrient deficiencies for a while after transplanting, which may have been exacerbated by not having enough soil moisture. And we also have weather that was cooler than would have been needed by these heat loving plants. But whatever the reason, a huge infestation of aphids appeared, enough to seriously impact the plants. I didn't deal with this issue early enough, mainly because I was hoping the extra care we were giving the plants would help them grow out of whatever issue they were having, and I was also hoping that the ladybirds would arrive to help deal with the pests. But they didn't seem to be around, and we started to resort to other methods of reducing the population of the fast-breeding aphids. I have been wondering if the increase in the number and diversity of birds in and around the gardens have been impacting on the population of ladybirds. And there are four different types of birds that regularly come into the polytunnels in search of food. I often see robins, sparrows, and wrens in the polytunnel when the doors are open, either in amongst the plants, pecking at the soil, or picking insects from around the polytunnel frame. And there are regularly blackbirds digging at the compost on the surface of the soil in search of worms, and later in the summer they also have a habit of eating the ripe tomatoes. The blackbirds have made so much of a mess this year, including pulling up seedlings, that I decided to use netting to cover the doorways at both ends of the polytunnel in an attempt to keep them out. I stapled two lengths of butterfly netting to the doorframe and weighed down the base with some stones, which produced makeshift curtains. This barrier does make it more of a hassle for us to get in and out of the polytunnel, but once I blocked off a few holes in the base of the plastic, we were able to keep the birds out most of the time. We put up the netting to keep the blackbirds out, which were the ones that I thought were causing the most damage, and I was disappointed to also be excluding the robins and wrens, who were both lovely companions to have hanging around while I was working in there. But I also wondered if excluding all of the birds would have an impact on the insect population in this growing space. It seems that only a few days later I noticed a ladybird on the aubergine plants, and a while after that I noticed the first of the ladybird larvae on the plants as well. 
and the population of ladybird larvae seemed to rapidly increase to match the abundance of the food source. And it got to the point where I had never seen so many ladybirds at various stages of development. And gradually, the number of aphids decreased on the aubergine plants. Then the ladybird adults and larvae started to migrate to other parts of the polytunnel, searching for more aphids on the other plants in this growing space. I have seen ladybird populations rise and fall in the past, but I have never seen anything like this before, as there were hundreds of these helpful creatures when only a short while ago very few could be found. It was fascinating to watch the life cycle of these insects, and it was great to be able to see the different stages of their development on the one plant. There were lots of the small, crazy-looking larvae crawling around, and they seemed to grow so quickly. They can apparently eat huge numbers of aphids, and there was an abundance of food for them. Then, after a while, the larger larvae seemed to stick themselves onto a leaf, and after a weird cycle of shaking, they gradually curled up and developed a shell and entered the pupae stage. A while later, the young adult beetles emerged from the shell, and initially they were pale yellow without any spots, and then their shells gradually darkened to a red color, and their very recognizable spots appeared. And they set off, consuming enough aphids to be able to reproduce, and lay eggs so that the cycle could continue all over again. And the full life cycle seemed to take only a few weeks, which was a lot faster than I thought it would be. I guess with the warmth of the polytunnel and the abundance of food, they were able to grow and reproduce quickly, especially with no predators around. So there is currently a huge population of ladybirds in the polytunnel, with a large number of the second generation currently in the pupa stage. Soon there will be more of these iconic adult ladybirds crawling through the polytunnel than I have ever seen before, and no doubt many of them will wander outside in search of more food, but at the moment there are very few ladybirds in the outside gardens, despite there being some aphids around. And this dramatic change in the population of these beneficial insects coincided with all the birds being excluded from the polytunnel. Of course, correlation is not necessarily causation, and this could be simply a coincidence. It could be just down to the delay in the development of the aphids and the excessive number of them. There could be other factors involved, including the changing weather, or some other issue that I'm not aware of. But I strongly suspect that it was excluding the wrens from the polytunnel space that was the key factor here. When the wrens were regularly in the polytunnel, there were very few ladybirds around, and when they were kept out of the polytunnel, the population of ladybirds increased dramatically. I could also be the robins or the sparrows, but the wrens apparently eat a lot of insects, and I often used to see them hopping and flying in amongst the leaves of the plants in search of food. I don't know if they would eat the larvae or the adult beetles or even the pupa stage, or perhaps all of them, but this seems to be the most likely cause for the absence and then the abundance of these natural aphid predators. Of course, I could open the curtains at either end of the polytunnel space for a few days and see what happens, but I'm hesitant to do that. I think this is a fascinating example of a three-tier predator-prey relationship that has significant impacts within the vegetable gardens. I really want a healthy background population of ladybirds in order to help keep the aphid population under control. And this is why I'm generally a bit more tolerant of having aphids on some of the vegetable plants, because I know that the adult ladybirds and the larvae need a lot of aphids to eat. And I know that it takes a while for the ladybird population to catch up to the occasional infestation of aphids. But this delay can be worrying, and the last few years the beneficial predators did not show up in the numbers that I was expecting. And that was especially the case with the crop of aubergine plants this year. And now I wonder if this decline coincided with the wrens appearing in the area around the gardens a few years ago. Unless I discover some other factor, it seems that I need to continue to use the barriers to keep out the birds so that they don't eat the ladybirds so that I can rely on them as the natural predators of the aphids. And I wonder how excluding birds from this polytunnel will impact the population of the other insects in this space. And I would not be surprised if I end up wanting to let the birds back in to deal with some other pest issue. This is part of the complex interactions of the webs of biodiversity, and an interesting example of how a vegetable garden is both a highly controlled space and a natural system. My main job, of course, is to try to give the plants everything that they need to grow strong and healthy so that any pest issues are less likely to become a real problem. And this may include not growing some types of vegetables because they need growing conditions that I cannot reliably provide, at least during some times of the year. But I also need to be mindful of the interactions between predators and prey within the ecosystem in and around the gardens, and to perhaps step in when one part of this wonderful biodiversity is eating something else that I rely on. <laughs>